Hello and welcome to a special program on tourism here on CNN Money Switzerland. It is Thursday the 28th of May. I'm Hannah Wise. Welcome along. Now, as Switzerland prepares to open its borders and sites to tourists next month, there are stark warnings from the Swiss Economic Institute that the number of overnight stays here expected during summer 2020 could decrease by 20 to 30 percent compared to the same time last year. With the hotel sector losing 900 million Swiss francs in value added, the Institute also warns that the absence of visitors from abroad will not be compensated by domestic tourists either. And we'll have more on just how hard it is to sell Switzerland to the Swiss a little later here on the programme. In other news, EasyJet, the UK-based budget airline, has announced plans to reduce the size of its workforce by up to 30% as it tries to cut costs in response to the coronavirus pandemic. The airline says it doesn't expect the market demand to return to pre-coronavirus levels until 2023. EasyJet also plans to reduce the size of its fleet. EasyJet Switzerland recently announced that some flights to Spain and Portugal out of Geneva Airport will resume on June the 15th. Meanwhile, Lufthansa's board has rejected a 9 billion euro bailout over conditions stipulated by the European Union. Swiss is a subsidiary of the German company. Lufthansa refused to agree to give up a number of its slots at airports in Frankfurt and Munich. Well, let's head on over to Zurich Airport now. Olivia Chang has been there today as the airport prepares to ramp up with new protective measures as it welcomes travellers over the coming summer. The new norm includes cleaning robots, disinfectant stations and more social distancing at check-in counters and departure gates. Here she is speaking to COO of the airport, Stefan Tudin. We try to keep the changes to a minimum. We want to go back to the operational procedures that we had before uh, the COVID crisis. So the difference will be, you will see the disinfection stations, you will see signs, we have different signs how uh, the passengers should move forward and of course uh, you will see face masks uh, by the employees and but otherwise, we try to keep the operational procedures and processes as we had it before. Now, there won't be any general temperature testing. Just talk to us the reasoning behind that and if there will be any exceptions. No, we won't have any. Or we, we will have probably some if it's uh, asked from an airline or from a state. But we have not temperature uh, screenings by ourselves because in our view it's not an efficient measure. You can treat uh, a high temperature by medicine or you can be already or you, you can already trans, uh, be transition of the COVID uh, virus before you have any signs of high temperature and that's why we believe it's not an efficient measure. But if it's asked by an airline we have the possibilities to make these temperature screenings. Actually, Alitalia is asking for that and we have this procedure in progress already today. What we have noticed today and something that you have stressed is that there is no obligation to wear a mask. I'm just wondering, when activity picks up again and there are more travellers in the airport, how will you be able to manage with all these protective measures? Mm. We have uh, a recommendation highly recommend uh, that to wear a face mask. The recommendations uh, by our state is also just a recommendation. There are some uh, law thinking behind to, uh, to this uh, procedure. But our uh, experience in the last days and weeks shows us that most of the passengers are already now wearing a face mask. We had flights with 100% passenger wearing a face mask. So I'm convinced that that will be a common procedure and passengers will uh, wear a face mask by themselves. Okay. And just taking a walk through Zurich 
airport, it really does look a bit like a ghost town at the moment. Uh, passenger traffic was down about 99%. How do you expect this figure to develop over the summer and towards the end of the year as well? Uh, you're right, it's like a ghost town. <laughs> and, uh, so we are pleased now, now the travel is coming back and uh, it's difficult to say how that will be, uh, the progress will be during the next weeks. But we heard from Swiss that uh, it will start with around 15 to 20 percent of the production. And that shows us that it still will be just a, a few flights in the beginning and slowly, hopefully slowly, then progressing towards. Swiss is expecting around 50% of the passengers by the end of the year, so that's what we also can expect with other airlines flying to Zurich. Quickly, just to finish up, how much did it cost overall to put together all these protective measures? And during Corona, do you think that Zurich Airport has any advantages over international airports in preparing itself for travel again? I can't give you a, uh, a number <laughs> about the costs, but we try also with this announcement today and uh, with uh, the information to the passengers to have uh, an advantage uh, to put with other airports, showing that it's really safe to travel over Zurich Airport and to travel with the airlines flying uh, to Zurich. And that's why we announced that today. And I'm convinced we are really with the taken measures, hygiene measures and uh, operational measures, we can assure a safe trip also today with the COVID-19 crisis. Well, Swiss is bringing back around 20% of its flights in June with the goal to reach 50% by the end of this year. COO Thomas Frick explains now why masks aren't mandatory and what he makes of the middle seat debacle. We were down to roughly 3% of our normal volume and in addition we were happy to do some repatriation flights and uh, still running cargo flights um, for, for several uh, customers in Switzerland. Uh, but now being back in uh, regular line operations with uh, almost 20% of our capacity, oh that's a good moment. Um, with social distancing, wearing masks, uh, processes, everything is, is in line uh, in our product and on board uh, we have added several measures uh, the most obvious is uh, uh, not an obligation but a strong recommendation to wear masks now traditionally the whole flying experience you're sitting right next to someone shoulder to shoulder yeah. knee to knee how is that going to change I mean especially are you going to make any special arrangements yeah, for commercial reasons, we cannot make special arrangements by uh, just leaving every second seat empty. So we, uh, if we're able to, we'll obviously fill our aircraft. And, uh, but I think having passengers sitting side by side and wearing masks uh, is, is, is quite a good measure and is very efficient. And we do not have knowledge of any case where infection uh, happened on board of an airplane. That's only if people decide to wear masks. Uh, people can decide to wear masks, but um, it's in line with, with uh, a Swiss attitude that we really rely on uh, social responsibility and social control. And uh, come, uh, the, the, the actual experience on board of our planes shows that everybody's wearing masks. Just want to press on the issue of masks because throughout the airport, it is a recommendation to wear a mask if you cannot adhere to social distancing of right. about two meters. On a plane, you're sitting right next to someone. Don't you think that deserves or warrants a mask? Yeah, that's a problem that we uh, cannot make it mandatory without uh, uh, the legal basis for that. So uh, that would be uh, quite a difficult issue that we have to discuss it with every country, in fact, uh, if the legal base is given uh, to, to make it mandatory. And uh, we would have to instruct our flight attendants how to deal with somebody uh, who's not following th this obligation. And, and therefore, we, we rather rely on uh, uh, reasonable measures and uh, in the end, it's the social control. How many of the flights do you actually plan to ramp up over the summer and overall for 2020? And what will happen to all the planes that are still left sitting empty? Yeah, as um, 
Of course, we'd like to increase our uh, offer in the market. Um, the, the, the aim is that we end up at maybe 50% by the end of the year. But what's more important is that we are back on a reliable schedule so that our customers uh, really can uh, visit the homepage and then see our offer and then can rely on that we will build up trust again uh, with our customers because right now we're just following the market. And uh, uh, that's the big change. This and, is... Uh, Sorry. Yeah. This is just the first step, and yeah. I'm just wondering how you will actually convince travellers to actually get on board a flight again, given that this is going to be a new era of travel. I think uh, it will be our goal uh, to convince our passengers that uh, travel still is seamless and it's, it's convenient, and that the, the additional measures are not that nasty that uh, people refrain from uh, doing a trip. Well, as Switzerland begins to open its borders, its cable cars and campsites next month, are the tourists there to enjoy them? Well, Switzerland Travel Centre CEO spoke to me earlier about how his industry is getting experimental when it comes to attracting clients, why Asia is booking, but just not for this year, and why selling Switzerland to the Swiss isn't all that easy. I guess it's going to help the... Um tourism industry as such, it's not going to help us as a tour operator. So I think Swiss, Swiss people obviously um, uh, travel in Switzerland, do day excursions, etc. They won't need us as a tour operator. They will organize their holidays on their own. Overall, I think for the industry, it's good, but it's probably not as good as having um, the um, foreign tourists. I guess uh, Swiss people who do staycation, they're never going to spend as much as a, as a tourist from abroad. They, they don't have the hotel costs. They might um, take their picnic from home. <laughs> they no, don't need to go to restaurants. So um, I think the, the, the added value for the um, tourism industries would be much higher with, um, with guests from abroad. So how are you targeting uh, guests from abroad? Um, yeah, we do a lot with um, B2B customers. So we, we sell a lot of uh, our um, packages and offers to uh, tour operators abroad. So we're in constant um, communication with them. We try to understand um, what kind of products they need now on a short term. And then for the B2C or the, the direct customers, um, we just try the classic um, uh, online marketing. But having said that, as, as all of the companies at the moment, we don't have the funds. So we should now do marketing, but as we have to save money, we can't do much marketing. So it's a bit of a tricky situation, I guess, for all of us in, in tourism, but also outside of tourism. Yeah. And what about tourists from China, India? These are huge, huge markets for Switzerland. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is there still interest this year from there? There is, there is interest, but not for this year, we learned. So um, we, we also have a, a team in, in Hong Kong, in Beijing, and uh, we obviously are in touch with them on a daily basis. They, are, they get a lot of requests, um, but for the next year. I think for the overseas markets, um, as you mentioned, India, China, but also um, uh, North America, we are a bit hesitant. I guess um, we're going to have a good year from these markets uh, uh, next year. But not for this year. Are you fighting for, for survival right now? Um, yeah, I guess it's fair to say so, yeah. I mean, uh, we're, quite, we're quite confident um, that we're going to make it, but we're going to lose an enormous amount of money. So all the, all the money we earned over the last few years is pretty much running out now as, uh, as we speak. We're going to have an income again, obviously in Ju July, August, September a bit. But then again, from, as I said before, for, for the winter months, it's going to be tricky for all tour operators because we are, we are the ones in between somehow. You know, we, um, we only, um, only if there's demand and only if there's also an offer ready, we can make our, um, our, our money, our margin. And no, it's, it's, yeah, it's a struggle. I mean, I'm confident for us with, with the funds we have, but um, it's definitely a, a struggle this year to, um, to make things happen. Yeah. And finally, large crowds may be a thing of the past for sporting events at least for the moment, but some sporting venues are testing out ways to keep the audience experience even without the audience. Jeannie Moose has this report. For now, fans at games have gone the way of the dinosaur. Imagine contests played in empty stadiums. No screaming. Yeah! No excitement. Yeah! No wagging tongues. But now there's an there's app no for that. By using this application, fans can send their support from their homes directly to the stadium. 
where it's transmitted by loudspeakers, 58 loudspeakers at this Japanese stadium where Yamaha Corporation did its first test at a soccer game. Viewers can tap to send applause, cheers, jeers, claps. Reaction was divided. This sounds pretty cool. And yes, there is even a boo button. Depending on the number of people and the number of times the buttons are tapped, the volume and excitement will increase. There was a little too much excitement earlier this month when a South Korean soccer team was fined $81,000 for using sex dolls to fill up the seats. Though the club said the supplier called them premium mannequins. And it was pretty embarrassing for the guy who proposed to one on the Jumbotron. Regular blow-up dolls are easing the emptiness of social distancing at a South Carolina restaurant, while classy mannequins in vintage outfits act as silent stand-ins at this three Michelin star inn in Virginia. To avoid silence at this German soccer game with no fans allowed, Artificial crowd noise was added to the televised version, and Fox sportscaster Joe Buck says when the NFL season gets underway... I know they'll do it. They're looking at ways to put virtual fans in the stands, so when you see a wide shot, it looks like the stadium's jam-packed, and in fact, wow. it'll be empty. But maybe the remote cheerer will end up cheering up fans at home. There's even a button labeled groan. Games without fans just don't squeak by. Genie Mouse, CNN, New York. And don't forget you can catch up on all our content by logging onto our website, cnnmoney.ch, and you can follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Bye-bye.